Now let's talk about the future of the lightweight division, because there's actually a lot of moving parts here. We'll get to the co-main event next, but we really need to dig into this for just a second. Okay, BC, let me ask the question this way. Do you think McGregor comes back and fights Oliveira, or maybe the winner of Oliveira versus Gaethje, or does Poirier losing make a fourth fight between them more likely next? Yeah, it would seem that the Poirier loss could have a ripple down effect in pointing Connor down that same avenue. And like you said, maybe against each other because it's just such a big payday to cash in. If you're Poirier, you'd be dumb not to keep saying, you know, this rivalry is still real. It's still, you know, still matters. Um, but you know, Connor did try to cover his bases by tweeting out, you know, when do I fight Charles Oliveira? And do I think Connor could talk himself into believing even how scary Oliveira is that he can find that chin and stop him in the ways others couldn't? I think he could. But yeah, Luke, I think this is more likely that we actually see this fight, whether you like it or not. Um, there'd be better incarnations we could see. Poirier against a, a Nate Diaz could be something special potentially. But, um, it's interesting that Connor's connected to this, uh, because Poirier and Connor are two of the biggest brands in this, you know, just off the title line. Superstar doesn't need the title. We'll make big pay-per-views. So uh, it feels inevitable, even though I don't want it. I don't think you want it, Luke, right? I, I just don't know what to say about it. Everyone's like, oh, let's stop playing games. You know Connor's going to get it. I mean, you know, it, uh, listen, it is, I can agree. I can obviously agree that Connor is going to be, in almost every case, a special case scenario. And that the UFC is going to have a lot of incentives to put him in a title fight, especially if it ends up being like with Gaethje. I don't know how if that's the best fight for Connor anymore. The, the old version of Gaethje, maybe the new one. I don't know. Yeah, no, but, he don't but, want that. Luke, he he'll be limping around the cage if he wants. If he tries. But to here's the that. part with Oliveira. Like I think you would, you and I would agree. Oliveira is much more well rounded than Connor, like by a long shot. However. Connor's ability to start strong historically, and again, who knows what, what version he's going to be next time he shows up, but the one that was like in 2015, 2016, you know, he was a fast starter, ready to go. He's got big power. He's rangy at times. You know, dude, that could be, again, if it goes long, you favor Charles Oliveira by a lot, but I think you would agree. McGregor versus Oliveira, if he's even anything close to what he was in 2016, a big if, but if that's that thing in the first round, dude, that's a, that's a toss up fight right there. Connor can win that one, and I think even his critics should acknowledge that. Well, <laughs> See, in the first, yeah, in the first. you're not incorrect in saying that, but but the hourglass is running out on us being able to justify that because if he doesn't do it in the first two and a half minutes of that fight, Luke, he's gonna lose badly. You know, I mean, if I'm if I'm if I'm Oliveira, I just double leg him off the opening start of that that fight and just get right to the point. But um, anyone who's throwing up in their mouth, why are you guys wasting this time talking about McGregor Oliveira? God, that could be in play at any point for the UFC. Let's wake up to that. But yes, Luke, I think it's more likely that we go. But what's next McGregor, for Dustin? McGregor Poirier. Let me ask you, because I think the, the McGregor fight is inevitable, but I think it's it could be just as likely that Connor would come back against a Nate or a Tony Ferguson. So what right. what are the the possible best next choices for Poirier in your eyes? Do you go right for a Covington type super fight? Do you try to get in the welterweight title rankings? What what the hell do you do, Luke? See, here's the thing. I think a Covington fight at 170 is a terrible matchup for Dustin. Maybe Dustin could do well enough in that fight to like make you go, okay. Um, you know, he certainly can hold his own in the right moments, but you know, at 170, we know Colby is strong enough at 170. We know he's got cardio for days at 170 and even without 170, he's going to be the better wrestler of the two. And by a pretty considerable margin, you know, that is a fight that maybe Poirier could win. And if he took that risk and got it, there would be huge accolades for him. I think that's a bridge too far. So if you go back to 155, what are some of the available names? We know Makachev and Dariush, they're taken up. So we look around, here's who's left. Gaethje is probably going to fight Oliveira next. Connor's that wild card that we discussed. To me, what makes the most sense for Poirier, assuming he wants to make another run, and that's a big if, I'm going to say is Michael Chandler. I think Poirier versus Chandler, two guys who just lost to Oliveira, would be a hell of a fight on its own right and would be a good get-back fight for either one of them. That, that would be or a you, massive fight. Luke, that'd huge be a massive fight, right? And, it'd be, dude, like, is that not an action fight? That's an action fight guaranteed. Or you could go Poirier versus Ferguson. Another fight I think would be a lot of fun that you could it would see be a lot of fun. guy has got a little bit left here. Okay, that would be a lot of fun. There's no doubt. But I think that's a waste of whatever the damaged goods Tony has left. And it's not that Tony, I don't think, still can't pull off a win on this level, but I would hate that matchup for him. I'd rather use Tony against Connor. So it's like, 
The fight I think would is actually most likely for Dustin is Nate. I think it makes the most sense. I just think Connor's comeback at the same time could get in the way and cancel that out. But what if we just gave Connor Tony, gave Dustin Nate? Seems to make a lot of sense, right, Luke? Connor to Tony, Dustin to Nate. So who does Michael Chandler fight? The loser of Makachev Dariush? Yeah, that's fine. That could that, that could work, right? That could work because the winner of that's going to be your number one contender. Gaethje's going to get Oliver. Yeah, that could work. I mean, mm-hmm. the good news in this conversation is that Chandler versus anybody is great. So I'm not worried about that, you know? You know what's amazing about this conversation? To your point, bantamweight, I think we both agree, is the most ascendant division in the sport. But, dude, lightweight, you know, there's been a ton of guys leaving. There's been a ton of shakeups. Some are 170. Some are retired. And, dude, you still have five or six or seven permutations you can make with just the top five guys that are all bangers, that are all incredible, that are all good and valuable in terms of learning experiences and for their resume. Lightweight maybe is not exactly what it used to be, but it's still fucking good as a division. 